Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 27 of the Leaco Day Challenge. I don't know why I had to look it up or like wait for it. I know it's day 27. Hit the like button, subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's prom. Uh, yeah, it's been a tough day as usual. It is Wednesday by the time that you're watching this. Uh, because I'm recording on Wednesday at 2 a.m. I just, I didn't just, I came back and I rested a little bit, but I did my speed day on Tuesday evenings, uh, and it is uh, always draining on me. Um, so yeah, uh, I think, I don't know, I, I, I'll save it another day. I was going to give some talk about doing hard things, but maybe that's hard for me today. So, eh, okay. But yeah, uh, as you may or may not notice, once again, I am here without a shirt or whatever. I don't know. People always make a big deal out of it. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I was going to say, if you liked the video, I would put on a shirt, but I don't know which one people prefer. So I don't know. Whatever. In any case, let's actually take a look at today's problem. It is 34.59. It is a hard problem. It's already 2.25 a.m. I am a dummy uh, for starting it so late. So let's get started. Uh, we'll, we'll save all the chatter for, for another day. All right, so length of the longest reshaped diagonal segment. You have a 2D grid. Uh, okay, each element is either 0, 1, or 2. A re okay, that's actually interesting, maybe. I don't know. A reshaped diagonal segment is it starts with a 1 and has to go with 2, 0, 2, 0, right? Does it have to? Oh, what the f... I forgot about this. This is the Nazi problem, I, I quoted, it, because they still haven't fixed the damn image. So I'm going to sneeze. Oh, maybe that's a bad time for... Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, they could have spinned it the other way. This is way, uh, I don't know, I always complained about this. So I, I, when when this problem was, um, I always complained about this when this problem was uh, on a contest. I don't remember if I did the contest live, but just what the, uh, come on, neat code. In this world, in this now, in this age, what is going on? Um... All right, let's just solve the problem and, you know, do what Americans do, which is to ignore the Nazi problem, I, I, I suppose. Anyway, let's go. Segment starts at 1, uh, 2, 0, 2, 0. Okay, the segment starts along a diagonal direction. Contain use the sequence in the same diagonal direction. <laughs> Makes that easy. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, not seeing this aside, um, it is just a very straightforward di uh, dynamic programming problem because you can think about each cell, um, it can only be entered twice, right? Um, if you, if you kind of cache the state, if you will, uh, from, sorry, from each direction, well, okay, so each cell, there are four directions, it can, four diagonal directions it can go, and for each direction it can go, it can only come from two places, right? Actually, I should just draw it out. Um, <laughs> eh. But basically, for example, if you have a cell here and you just choose this diagonal, then there were only two ways to enter it, right? There's only this way, just, you know, continue on, or I think it's this way. Um, Right. Anyway, there's, uh, it's either here or the other, the symmetry of it, right? So uh, only two ways. So that means that for each um, cell, for each direction in which there are four of them, there are only two of them ways to enter. So that's only, for each cell, there are only eight total directions. And given that uh, R and C, uh, as I like to call them, is only 500, this is a pretty straightforward problem to do dynamic programming, right? Um, and of course, a lot of those things aren't even possible, so it should be okay. Um, I 
I guess what I said is actually a little bit off. I think you can actually even times it. You have to multiply it by two because it matters. Um, let's bring back the image. I was a little bit too hasty on this one um, because it matters whether um, you can turn in the future, right? Because if you're caching the changing the color real quick, if you're caching the results going that way. Um, it matters whether you can or cannot, right, go in the future. And they may you a different answer. Uh, they don't have to, but they can, right? So so because of that, maybe that you times another two, one for, because um, 10, I mean, for this one, there's only one way to go because you already used up your turn. But for this one, I guess there is a, a flexibility there. So maybe you can times it by two, but again, not all the states are possible, right? So you have like all times C times, uh, times four times two times two, so that should be still manageable. I didn't actually do the math. I think that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's good enough for me to start. Um, yeah, and we can just put this as naive uh, as naively as possible, really, uh, or as quote unquote proof force as possible, but put uh, a layer of cache on top, which is memorization. Um, yeah. So how, how do we want to do it? So in here we have directions, right? And we have four of them. We have, and it doesn't matter which, the, the, the first one doesn't matter as long as you do all, the, all of them in order, right? Because you want to be able to turn, represent a turn in an easier way. So you can just do like, um, actually let's do, um, I'll, I'll put a comment, hang on. Uh, top and left, right? So. Or up and left maybe it's more accurate, not top and left. Um, so then rotating will be up and right, right? And then down and right. And then, uh, yeah, down and left, right, obviously. And then now we just have to establish. Um, eh, yeah, no, it's it's two thirty a.m. I'm not gonna go over memorization today. Um, I usually, or in the past, I I tried a bit, um, but eh, sorry, friends. <laughs> but I assume you you. Uh, but I mean, the the key part about memorization um, is just that for every input that you get into a function or whatever, you get the same output every time. And therefore, you save um, you know time and space. Well, not space, but time by saving it down by not redoing the problem. Right? That's it. Uh, and maybe here we'll get calculate. I don't know. That's a crappy name, honestly. But you have the x, you have the y. Um, you have maybe left as in how many turns you can have left. You can only have one turn anyway, right? Yeah, and I think that's good enough. Um, this is the length, right? There's no cost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just the length, right? Yeah, length. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was going to say something about... Um, I don't know. I was going to say something about like maybe you could put either is a zero or two in the thing, but I think everything is implicit because, or that in that case will be implicit because that determines obviously really uniquely on X and Y anyway, because it just matches to the grid. So that's not an extra information or anything. Uh, I think the, the, sometimes it is a little bit curious for me because I, write, I like writing base cases at the top, but this one, the base case is the default case of there's just nowhere to go. So that that's why it's a little bit. Sometimes it, it the structure is a little bit awkward. I I messed up actually already. Uh, I need the current direction, right? This is actually a uh, uh, a thing in Python. So, eh. let's go direction then. A keyword is that what, is that what I was looking for? Okay, yeah. So now we're good. And we could do a quick analysis, right? Um, X is just R, right? Y is C. Left, go, um, as we said, is either zero or one left. So direction is 
you know, zero to four, whatever, four directions. Um, so in total, and each input will do two work, right? Um, all of two work. I don't know. I know all of two is not a real thing, but because it can go straight or it could go right. That's it, right? Or yeah, go right. So that's basically it. And and you could just kind of multiply these out. These are all independent, right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So for dx, dy in directions of direction, eh, maybe you write something like this. Oh, I, I, I guess you can write in a for loop, but actually it's not uh, super useful um, because you have like an if statement on the other one because I forget. Um, so you have this, right? This is just go straight. Um, yeah, uh, I call it go because I usually write go, um, left, and then direction doesn't change, right? So something like this, and then this is a plus one because you move. Of course, you do have to check that um, uh, you don't go out of bounds. And of course, the, the big thing of... Um, um, it's a little bit awkward. Uh, basically, the two zero thing. So it always starts at one, and then the next number is always two. Okay, um, that's fine, I suppose. Right. So what does that mean? That means that if you have a two, you want a zero. Um, so maybe you could write something like, and I, I don't know if this. I don't know how I did it last time, right? Uh. Eh. Maybe I should have just written this like this. I usually do write it like this, but today I was just... Because I, I usually write this in a for loop, so this feels a little awkward. All right, so you do this, right? Uh, basically, now you have x, y plus this is you go to 2, right? So if one of them is zero, the other has to be two. Of course, if you have multiple ones, that could get you in trouble. But as you'll see later, or hopefully you'll see later, if I do it correctly, it won't come into play. Uh, and then now this is go right. But only if we are able to, which is to say, if left is greater than zero, right? Then we have dx, dy, and we can maybe just copy and paste this really. I'm a little bit lazy today, right? Um, but now this is going to be plus one mod four, right? For the number of directions. And in this case, uh, this will be here, right? Pretty straightforward. Uh, and we have to do left minus one. And that's it. We're pretty much done. Um, and of course, now we have to just kick it off, which is for uh, X in range of R, for Y in range of C, the first digit has to be um, 1, right? Then now um, you have to start at a 2, right? So, um, yeah, but we also have four directions. So for D in directions, no, uh, for, I mean, yes, but mm, for D in range of length of direction, uh, I usually write it a little bit differently, as I always say. dx, dy is equal to the direction of d. Um, n, x, n, y is equal to x plus dx, y plus dy. Same thing as we have already done. Uh, and maybe we just copy and paste this because we already done it. <laughs> right? Uh, but of course, this part is going to change. Uh, we always know that this is going to be 1, so now we just have to know that this part is 2. If this is two, then we can get started. And then, yeah, best is equal to max. Best, oops. Uh, Nx and y. Uh, left is one, because we haven't used it yet. And then direction is just whatever d that we gave it. And that's it. Uh, plus one, maybe? Is that a plus one or plus two? I think probably plus two. Let me think it through. I mean, we could probably just run it and check it out. The The reason is because I don't know if I'm double counting. Because you have to count the first node, the, 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 the one. Wait, the number of segments or the number of cells? 
Um, so okay, so this is number of cells. Um, so you you have to count the one that's at least this, but I have to check whether we count this by, and I don't think we do, because this plus one implies that we're going somewhere, and by going somewhere you already have one. Um, so I think we have to do plus two, even though that's a little bit awkward looking. Uh, but it also means uh, one thing, right? Which is that uh, if this is the case, then um, we have to do at least one, right? Uh, hmm. Oh, <laughs> like I said, I'm so used to writing it similarly to that way. Uh, di oh, directions. Yeah, I have to fix that too. I, I saw it as soon as I... Oh. Okay, looks okay. Do I remember the cache? Yeah, um, so it should be okay. Hopefully. Hopefully no silly mistakes. Hopefully Liko doesn't make me time out for no reason, because sometimes it's known to do that. Because I want to go to sleep. I don't even... Yeah, you know, it's not super interesting to me. But yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, other than the uh, it being a Nazi problem, it's not super interesting, to be frank. Um, it is just... Yeah, um... I don't know. I don't really know what, what else to say. I mean, we already did the complexity, right? Uh, I mean, you know, RC times 2 times 4 times 2. Um, and you could, and there is another loop here, right? There's R times C times 4 for directions. But this is technically O of 1 because it gets cached or amortized O of 1, if you will. So it's R times C times 4, which is smaller than this. Or I guess in big O, depending on how you want to do directions and stuff like that and left. Um, I don't know. So yeah, um, that is all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. And yeah, stay good, stay healthy to your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.